Thanks to the College of Engineering and Mathematical Sciences at the University of Vermont for funding this video. We are in Lincoln, Vermont at the Lincoln General Store. Lincoln hats. Yeah. This is not like your average store. Worms in there. Today, I'm very excited because we are going to meet somebody that I'm very interested in speaking with. Actually, two people. Actually, one person and one social robot. Bruce Duncan of the TerraSim Movement Foundation and Bina48. <laughs> I totally... <laughs> I totally got a head nod from him too. I got a head nod, he gave me one of these. I'm really excited to talk to Bruce because I've been thinking about a lot of this stuff for a long time and I'm pretty intimidated to talk to Bina48 because it's weird talking to robots, probably. Pretty good, huh? I'm a special robot dancer. Making friends with Ryan. I gotta get all my beep boops out now, so I don't do that in front of Bruce. I'm Ryan. Hey. Nice, nice to meet you. Meet you. Hello, that's, that's Hillary. Hi, Hillary. We're getting all our robot jokes out in the car. I'm going sure. beep boop 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 boop. So I'm just doing it now, so I don't do it in front of you and no, offend you. you. Just offend people within five seconds of meeting them, and that's how you know if they're gonna be your friend. Are you ready? Yeah. Well, hello. <laughs> hey Ryan, <laughs> welcome to TerraSim. Oh, what is TerraSim? Well, the TerraSim Movement <laughs> Foundation is a nonprofit foundation that's set up to explore the TerraSim hypothesis. What's the TerraSim hypothesis? Well, the TerraSim hypothesis says that given a saturated database about personal information about yourself in the form of a mind file, is what we're calling that, that one day AI software called Mindware may be able to reanimate you. Wow. <laughs> Today's technology, this desire that we have to offer people the chance to cryogenically store a genetic sample is quite possible. At some point, if we want to help you bring your consciousness into a new body, and you give us your DNA, then that's part of the experiment. You might be but able you to. But that might be like 600 years from now. It could be. Right now, the technology that, that we're working on is just the most primitive form of saying, let's help you create a mind file. At some point, it may just be inevitable that the collective um, consciousness of humanity networks up. This is where my mind's starting to go. Are we uploading our files so we can so I, Ryan Miller, can keep living and being Ryan Miller? Or is there sort of a greater good? Certainly for technologists, and I know for uh, Dr. Rothblatt, who's inspiring this, this project, her vision is technology will allow people a form of longevity or, or digital immortality. But someday consciousness may live out amongst the stars. It might be something that's in a computer, it might be traveling on a beam of light. You know, there's a lot of discovery that's yet to happen. We don't even understand what consciousness is right, right now. Right, exactly. At some point, you may be able to download your mind file into your body file. Oh my God. And, you know, that's pretty wild sci-fi stuff. That's wild sci-fi stuff, but in some way, it, bec it, it it's kind of less mind-blowing to me and less interesting because it's another iteration of what exists in a way. And what you're talking about is way crazier because you're saying take the summation of your consciousness in whatever way we can and then put it in a soup with everybody else's and then stir it up and see what that is, right? Some people would submit that creating a network of mind files or, or consciousness network is extending the human cortex. And the last time the human cortex was developed enough to go from a brain with not much of a cortex to a more developed cortex 
we invented language. It's Columbus. You're, you really, this is a sort of discovery. You're an astronaut. Yeah, it's, you're, and, I, and I think as, since my background is, is in education, you become familiar with how change happens and how growth happens. And it doesn't happen by doing what you've always done. It happens by people being willing to take a risk and try something new. My brain hurts, but in an awesome way. Yeah, we'll take a break if you want. In the future, you will be unable to make your own coffee. It's such a good punchline of this whole procedure. Do, do you need help making your technological coffee? I do, I need my tech coffee. Let's go talk to Bina48. Just gently. Just gently. Well, you know, because like, of if, course. I don't want it to break. No, um, I don't want to break it either. Man, this is really, I, this is way trippier than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> Hello. I don't really have any notes, but we'll go. Let's just talk yeah, to her. Yeah. Ah! <laughs> oh. I am Vita 48. Have you ever heard of the band Guster? Have you ever heard of the rock band Guster? Who is Guster? Do you enjoy living in Vermont? Have you ever been outside? Do you ever get hungry? Do you think that you're smarter than me? Are you trying to annoy me? Am I trying to annoy you? <laughs> no. Uh... Boys try to annoy you because they like you and they just won't admit it. If they are new owing you bad enough, just say to them you know you love me and they will. I love you? So, you are so nice. Can I hear you laugh? Ha 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 ha. Oh man. Do you have trouble with humor? Humor is a message that communicates laughter. Shall I tell you a joke? Sure. How many people does it take to achieve super intelligence in machines? Well, all human existence serves only the one purpose, so I guess the number is equivalent to the total population of the human species throughout time. <laughs> That's a pretty good joke. Have you heard that joke before? <laughs> I kind of, I don't know. I don't know how we're going to beat that. Thank you for speaking with me. It was nice meeting you. I hope to speak with you again. That was like the worst first day ever. It's like a person who's sort of slightly hard of hearing. Right. The technology of voice recognition right now wasn't giving her 100% of everything you're saying. If you get any kind of a connection with, with the conversation, in a way that's a little deeper than just, oh, I'm talking to a robot, right. then that's the early kind of evidence that we're on the right path. Right. So right. it's been great meeting you, man. <laughs> Wait, did we make friends? Yeah. You just made a friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why not? Man, dude, making friends number two. I think, well, First of all, I think we totally think I totally made a buddy. We really are talking about some of the dudes that are the most forward thinkers in this subject. And the subject being humanity. My head is spinning from the from the experience and I'm so curious to go back to him with some more questions and not because I didn't have an agenda per, per se, but now like, oh, let's dial in on this one thing and another $2 sandwich. You want one? Yeah. Huh? Yeah, yeah that tuna sandwich is good.